In this video, I'll demonstrate how you can use an understanding of jacket construction to create workable original jacket designs. I know how many of you have trouble working out how to draw the full closed shapes that are required when drawing and filling a jacket in Illustrator. It can be so frustrating and all you want to do is copy something on the web. Welcome to this first of many quick tute videos. You can go to my website and download my template and example before we start. When drawing a jacket, there are two things that determine the style. The first would be the button overlap. Simply put, we would say double or single breasted, and the second would be the height that the collar sits on the neck, or the break line, the fold back of the collar and lapel. Finer details would be the size of the button. So let's start, I'll draw the front first. I usually draw the basic shape of the jacket body, the collar and the sleeve first. Let me show you here. As I always say, get the full shape done and then refine lines and silhouette if you need to. The sleeve. Can you see when I draw the sleeve? I draw the shape and then go inside the body shape to close the sleeve shape. Now I copy this line by selecting the middle anchor point, Ctrl or Command C, Ctrl or Command F, and I'll move both over to the left, using my keyboard arrows to move these away. I find the Shape Builder tool is the most efficient way to divide a shape. Remember, I press the Option or Alt key when I'm in the tool to delete areas and lines. I'll just shape the inside sleeve and copy that line over to the left, remove the fill, adjust it and shape it for the seam. With the collar and lapel, I draw the full close shape and then separate the collar from the lapel. I do this because the grain or rotation of a pattern fill is different for the lapel and the collar. See here? In a jacket, this seam line here is extended from the shoulder-neck junction. See? I'll just draw a rectangle for the pocket jet and flap, shape them and move them into position. Now I am ready to draw the buttons and buttonholes. I am going to create a dome leather button. It's quite simple to make this look like you know what you are doing. Watch this. Now for the keyhole buttonhole. I'm just drawing a fish body shape and I'm adding a zigzag effect to this. Once this is done, I make a copy and move this aside and I'll rotate the button and buttonhole to follow the angle of the front. I'm putting the first and last button in place and I'm going to use the blend tool to add two buttons in the middle. 
I select the blend tool, double click on the work surface and choose specified steps and two. I have not grouped the button and buttonhole together as I want mainly buttonholes on the right side of the jacket and mainly buttons on the left side of the jacket. To reflect, I'm using the reflect tool to copy the other side of the jacket. I select the body and sleeve, place the reflect reference point on the guideline and drag across to the right holding the shift and Alt or Option key at the same time. As you can see, this mirror copies the whole jacket. It is a woman's jacket, so I'll send this to the back for it to button right over left. Here I will organize the buttons and buttonholes. On the right side of the jacket, the buttonhole side, select the buttons. You will notice that the top button and the bottom button are highlighted with a line between them. I need to expand this object to be able to edit or delete some of the buttons. Select the buttons, go to the Object drop-down menu and expand. When the dialog box is activated, deselect Fill and Stroke and only leave Object checked to make the blended object editable. Now you can delete the bottom three buttons and you can put a line profile in the button if you wish. On the left side, you can delete the button holes and the top button, leaving the other three. For the back, I'll copy the full jacket over to the left. Here I prepare the copy to create the back. I'll move the collar and lapel, the buttons and buttonholes, and the pocket flaps aside with the arrow keys. I'll delete the sleeve on the right side. I select both front body shapes and join them with the Shape Builder tool. Be careful not to include the dart tuck in this. Now I delete the right half of the, of the jacket with the Direct Selection tool. I move the top anchor point to the centre back neck and shape it. Now I can join the two open end anchor points for the back seam. For the back sleeve, I'm using this line to divide the sleeve. I need to illustrate the opening where the buttons will sit. To do this, I'll add an anchor point here before I split the shape. By putting the anchor point on the line before I split the shape, it will be on both shapes of the sleeve. Now I can shape this from here. I'll tweak the back sleeve shape and add the buttons and buttonholes and group the whole sleeve. Next, I'm drawing the back pleat. I now reflect all these shapes and unite the back pleat shape. Put the pocket flaps back in place and arrange them to the back. I also arrange the sleeves to the back too. Now the collar. Delete everything except the side neck lines and join the top anchor points and the bottom anchor points and move this back into place and shape the collar. From here, I'll group everything and make a copy to place behind the front. So, as you can see, I have drawn both the front and the back at the same time. I find this the most efficient method of working. Often illustrators will just do a quick fill in the back and only display the front. Down the track, you will need a back, so why not do it immediately to save time later? I hope you enjoyed this quick tweet. Please hit subscribe at the bottom of this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fashion and Footwear Illustrator as all future quick tweets will be hosted there. 
Please comment or ask questions in the comments space. I'd love some suggestions for more quick tutes. I look forward to seeing you again very soon.